Yo, Counter Attack Podcast with myself, Daps. Guys, keep liking, subscribing, sharing, all of that good stuff. And um, yeah, for those of you who are requesting players to come back on the pod, because I don't think I've had a player since Jordan Cousins, which was, that was only like a month ago. And you are already um, calling for more players. But yeah, we're, we're getting back into that now, man. And I've got a couple of players lined up for you. And um, I think we've got a good six weeks worth of players for you guys. And just make sure you keep liking, subscribing and all that. So today, I've got a, a goalkeeper. I think you're the first goalkeeper that's um, that's been on my, my podcast. Yeah, because you know no one likes you guys. So. <laughs> 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 no, no one really likes you. Like, so no, I'm joking. But um, we've got a goalkeeper that's that's um, coming on the podcast. And this I've actually got lucky with this one because at the time I asked him to come on or wanted him on, he was playing in League One. League Two. Oh, League Two, sorry. Yeah. He was playing in League Two. And now he's um, a Premier League footballer. In fact, we're going we're gonna to touch on that in, in, in a second. But yeah, I don't want to butcher your surname yeah. yeah. Yeah, How do you say your surname? Vigaroo. Vig- oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, good. We've got Lawrence Vigaroo on, Burnley goalkeeper. How are you? Yeah, no, very good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Are you sure you're not nervous? Don't, don't no, no, nervous. I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, um, love for coming on. Obviously, um, at the time this is being recorded, you guys played Brentford yesterday. Yeah, yeah. How did you not find that game? Yeah, tough. Um, they're a really good side. They've been together a long time. Uh, and I was there, to be fair. I was in the stand watching. And um, yeah, they look really good. Mm. Um, you know, a Premier League side that's been in the league for a few years. They've they've been together a while. And, you know, I think we're just finding our feet in the Premier League. I think um, as time goes by, I think we'll, we'll just get used to it and, and we'll be all right. But at the moment, it has been a bit difficult. But you know that's that's football, and mm. that's what happens. Yeah, I, I think. Um, in case anyone ever tells you what I've been saying about Burnley, <laughs> um, now all just said, um, what I've been saying about Burnley is that they're a good team, really, really good team. I could say you, you, you guys are a good team, but I just feel like number one, the elite goals. Sorry, number two, um, that added bit to just put the ball in the back of the net is. I just, I feel like you guys are struggling, but I do feel like you lot will get better. And, you know, you, how many games so far? Eight games? Is it eight or nine games? Yeah, yeah eight, so. eight, eight or nine games in. And I do think you lot will be better. I think there are other clubs who are um, worse off, basically. But you, you guys are better than certain clubs. I'm not going to name the clubs or whatever. I'm not going to do that here. But um, yeah, I, I do think you lot will be okay. But what is it like actually being in that team and what are the differences to when you was playing League One and now in terms of standards, just the coaching, even that the like the goalkeeping coaching. Like what's the, what's the main differences? Yeah, no, I think um well the detail is is incredible. So mm. um, you know, uh the manager, all of his staff, I think, you know, the de- the detail, the level of detail that they put into everything is it's something that, to be fair, I've not even seen in my career. So, mm. and I've and I've been at Tottenham, I've been at Liverpool, and I never saw that level of detail. Yeah. So I think he's setting us up to to be a to be a really really good side. Um, but you know, it's it's tough because you know you go up a level, you know the players are better. You can't make any mistakes because if you do make a mistake, then in the Premier League is a goal, and that's yeah. that's the biggest thing I've found is that even in training, you know, if if a defender's a centimeter out of position the striker will punish you and score. So that, mm. that for me is like, is very, it's very difficult because, you know, it's very, very hard to be perfect. But mm. I feel like, you know, the very, very, very top players in the Premier League, they're, they're literally 99% mm. perfect. And if their 1% is, is off by a little bit, then, you know, you can concede a goal. But yeah, so it's, it's really difficult. But I think we have, you know, we've got really, really good characters. Um, we're a very, very young squad, which right. is, you know, in, in one way it's really good because, you know, you're building players and you can see the potential with a lot of players. And on the other hand, it's, it's quite difficult because, you know, a lot of these players haven't played Premier League before, you know, me included, that, you know, it's, it's such a, it's, it's the best league in the world. So mm. it's very, very difficult to like, you know, uh, to adapt. But I think in time, I think we'll be very good because I think that level of detail is, you don't get that. Mm. You don't get that everywhere. So I think we're very lucky to have, to have, um, Vincent as a manager and I think he's him and his staff have been brilliant with with everyone so mm. yeah it's, it's so even when I think of like the game against United let's, let's say 
you guys play really, really good stuff. But it's just, like I said, just that final thing. But it will come. Do, are you guys not stressed because it is still early? But do you guys just know it's actually going to come, or you know, or are there slight panic buttons yet? No, no. I think we we have to. We can't be too high or too low because I mm. think once you start doing that, then yeah. you know you, you're finished. But I think um, you know, as long as we we deliver what we're being told in training week by week, I think. You know, we've seen positive signs against, you know, first half against Chelsea before the goal, mm. before Chelsea scored, the whole game against United. You know, um, there was periods against Man City in the first game where we were really, really good. Um, you know, and then you're playing against top team. We had a really tough, tough start as well. We've played, you know, majority of teams that will be fighting to get into Europe um, mm. this season. So, you know, the next few games are will be very, very important for us to see where we're at. We've got teams that, you know, that are around us at the moment and hopefully we can get some points there on the board. Yeah, no, I hear that. Um, so you as a goalkeeper, you you touched that you've never played Premier League football before. With every other position on the pitch, so you've got a goalkeeper, I mean, defenders, midfielders, strikers or whatever, there's like a rotation, you know you're going to get games. How difficult is it for you, especially that you're probably going to be itching to make that at least one Premier League appearance, how difficult is it for you to actually stay in the mindset of it's going to happen and let me just continue fighting for my spot when you know there's only really and truly only one spot available? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's difficult. But also, you know, for me, I came from, you know, League Two where, you know, we had a really good season. Mm. To then get the phone call from from Burnley to go and, to go and sign for them, it's like, you know, you don't really hear of that. So for me, my mindset was always, you know, I, I just need to not enjoy, but I need to work hard because... Mm. You know, uh, I want to get myself to a level where, you know, that I never would have thought I would have been at. So, you know, um, I just work hard in training. I take on everything that they, they say, you know, because, you know, the detail that, that they're giving me is, is something that, you know, I've never I've never had before, you know, mm. in terms of you know, distribution, how to touch the ball when the ball comes back to you. Stuff that I've never even thought was important. <laughs> it's so important here. So yeah. it's like, you know, that that sort of stuff is is helping me massively. And I think that I'll become a much better keeper for it, mm. you know, and then in the future, whatever happens, happens. But at the moment, I'm just enjoying, you know, learning day to day, like what they want from from goalkeepers because mm. they actually count goalkeepers really important. I think most teams do now, you know, I see many goalkeepers in the Premier League now. They're very, very good with their feet. And mm. that's something that I pride myself on. And I come here and, you know, I don't think I get this opportunity to come to Burnley if, you know, my... You know, my passing is not up to scratch or, mm. you know, so I think that's one thing I, I really take a lot of pride in in my game. And, and I think that's why I got this opportunity. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny you say it because like me as a player or fan or anyone watching, when we look at goalkeepers, we just think, or oh, me, let me, let, me speak, let me speak about me. If you're good at keeping a ball out the net, you're good. Obviously, there's other attributes. So, you know, when you're coming at it to take crosses and your distribution and all of that. But hearing you say that there's more detail that you actually have to add on on top of that, was that something that surprised you? Because for you at Leighton Orient, you're probably just a really good keeper but and your attributes are your attributes which make you good. But having to go there and being told, no, you need to build on this, you need to build on that. Did that surprise you? Were you expected um, to just go in there and just... No, 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 no. I didn't expect to go. No, I knew that there was going to be, you know, everyone I spoke to about, about Burnley was that the detail was, was incredible. So mm. like that was something that really excited me, like going to see like how they look at football, how they view it. Um, I knew like for coming from Orient, I mean, I've always, you know, pride myself on being good with my feet. You know, I think the other part of my game was, you know, it was okay. I just thought that like, like you say, like being a goalkeeper, just make saves and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and come for crosses, you know, like, but what I found in league one, league two is that, you know, uh, goalkeepers are really good at that, that sort of stuff, mm. making saves and coming for crosses you don't really get many that are, you know, good, good on the ball. And I think that's last season, what helped me, you know, have re such a really good season was that, you know, there wasn't many goalkeepers in the league that were, you know, were pass first keepers. So, you know, uh, that was, that was my kind of, you know, that was my, you know, my selling point in terms of, you know, uh, why I think I had such a good season was that, you know, there wasn't many that were doing it, mm. doing what I was doing, or there was maybe three or four of us in the league. So, um, you know, when you go up to that league, to the to Premier League, it's like, you know, everyone, n near enough, 90% of the keepers are, are good with their feet. So yeah. like, you have to be even better on your, with your feet, you know, mm. than, than just the average keeper. So that's that's what I found difficult is that, you know, I go from, you know, League Two where, 
not many are really good with their feet. So it's easy to stand out mm -hmm. to the Premier League where, you know, the majority of keepers are very, very good with their feet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's like the number one thing that you now actually the other half of the game, which I didn't really need at Orient, is that yes. what you need here to set yourself apart? So it's, it's the complete opposite. I think um, you look at keepers at like Allison, for example, who has both. Mm. That's why he's named as the best goal, one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Edison, I think he's the same. The it's fine. I don't, I don't put Edison up there, but I think I think for Edison, for me, he's the best because I think under pressure, under immense pressure, like he's. But is elite. it because of his distribution under pressure? Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it is. I think Allison's a better goalkeeper in terms of I, I, his yeah, hands. yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. But I think for me, like Edison under Ill, immense pressures, like he's he's the, the, the best. quality stays. But I've, yeah, but like like I was saying though, like Allison, he's held as the best in the world mm. because he's good at coming for crosses, making saves, mm. and he can also play. Mm. Whereas like in in League Two is the other half of the, yeah. the other half is man, make sure you come for your cross, make sure you make saves, mm. and just kick it. Yeah, you know. So like anyone can just kick it. Is people that look for a pass, which is a difference. And that's, it's, it's very, very important, I think, um, in the game. Yeah. I, I look at Alisson as the best, uh, funny, funny you say that, because in terms of just his overall, just keeping the ball out of the back of the net, I remember there was, I saw Andy Cole on a podcast talking about, someone said to him, one-on-one, -on -one, the the, um, the favours in with the striker or whatever. Yeah. But when it's Alisson, when it's one on one, I, I genuinely feel like no, Alice is gonna make a save here. Yeah, yeah. Like he's he's so he's so hard to beat. And and I look at him, I look at Edison, I look at um who's not I do like you know what I do like Ramsdale. I, I can't lie. Yeah. I, I do like Ramsdale a lot. And speaking on goalkeeping situations and everything, and you know, they're only fighting for one spot. When you see what's happened at Arsenal currently, where you've got David Raya and Ramsdale, if you was in that boat where you're number one, they brought in another keeper. All of a sudden, you're not number one, but you're being told that we're going to rotate keepers. How would you, like, think about that? Like, would you just be up for it or would you? I think um, I think I've think read that stuff, stuff that Arteta said. I think he said um, that, you know, he has to work on the training on the training ground and, and you know, and he'll get, an, and once he gets another opportunity, he has to take it. I think, mm. um, you know, uh, it's a really tough diff situation because Arsenal really won the league last year and then, you know, you go and get another goalkeeper and then you're not playing. So exactly. it, it is difficult, but, you know, I think um, one thing, if it was me in that position, you know, I would find it hard. Like, like Ramsdale has, I think he, I think he has found it quite difficult, but I think he has the mentality, I think, from what I've seen on the outside to, you know, he's been in that situation before. I think when he was at Bournemouth, you know, I think he didn't start as number one and then he worked his way in and, and got the, got the starting job. So it, it takes time, you know, I think, um, as long as he keeps working hard, I think he'll get another opportunity and then it's just up to him then. Mm. I think he has to take it. But I think there's, you know, you look at Man City, I think Ortega's in a similar position. I think Ortega's done really well when he's stepped in for Edison. Um, and then, you know, as Edison comes back and then Edison plays and then it's difficult for, mm. once you get a taste of that little taste of playing mm. to then come back out and then, you know, Edison's back in. I think it happens every, I think you need really need two good goalkeepers because, you know, I saw a stat last season. I think there wasn't many goalkeepers at all that played all 38 games. Oh, really? Or all 46 games in the mm. championship. From championship to Premier League, there wasn't many at all that played all of the league games. Mm. So you need a you need a number two that, that's that's good and reliable. Mm. You can't just have, you know, someone that's... Yeah, but how many teams do you know that have two top class? Well, I wouldn't say top class, but you look at Brighton, for example. Mm. I think they're playing, you know, Steel and Verbruggen. The, they're playing yeah, like they're, two games. They're yeah. alternating two games or mm. two or three games each. So I think that's one way of doing it. Mm. But then again, you don't have the consistency of... And how know, big is consistency for you? As it's very keeper? important. Yeah, it's so mm. important. Like, you know, just knowing that, you know, you have a settled back four or back five in front of you and then, you know, you know where everyone's going to be, you know, their strengths, you know, their weaknesses. I think it's mm -hmm. so important. Um, and... You know, I think that can't be understated because I had that for three, four years at Orient and it was like, I knew this was the back four. I knew what he was really, really good at. I knew mm. what he maybe wasn't as good at. They knew what I was good at. Mm. They knew what maybe I wasn't as good at. So then we could all compensate for each other and mm -hmm. it, it helps to build a successful defence, you know, and something that we really took pride in. Um, but is is football, I think, um, you know, having consistency is one thing, but, you know, the way football's going now, I think... Mm. You know, players, they don't play every game. So, you know, they rotate, they chop and change here and there. And that's part of having a really, really good squad and, mm. and developing for the future. So, 
What's your what's your pet peeve as a as a keeper? That that people I would think that when people wait, what's your strongest foot? Left. So when people pass it to your right, like Yeah, I don't like back. it. But 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 to be fair, like sometimes they have to. So then mm. I have to um, you know, quickly think and look at what the next pass could be or try and get as good a contact as I can. But you know, that's one thing I found coming up to Burnley was that, you know, uh they, they suss it out quickly, like what your what your strengths are. So they always play to your strengths and it's like okay. in training everything so you know, is I find it I find it hard in training, but then when I look at it back, I'm like, this is actually it's not mm. as hard as I thought it would be, like mm. in terms of the quality and, and stuff. I don't I don't feel like I'm way out of place or But that's I think that's testament to I think how good you are though. Yeah, it is one thing, yeah. of course. But then of, another thing is that, you know, uh, I've seen, you know, many players, they, they're really good in training and then on a match day, it's, they're completely different because yeah. it's the pressures and it's, it's just, it's one of those things like, I think you never know until you get the opportunity. So mm. the, the most important thing for me was, you know, coming in, hopefully not standing out as being not up to it, which to be fair, so far I haven't. I think I've, you know, I've done quite well in training and, you know, um. I try to be nice, good personality for the boys because, mm. you know, uh, we've got, you know, a really young squad and, you know, you know when, when you're in these situations, I've been in it before when I was younger at Swindon where we had a really, really young squad and, you know, when, when things started to get tough, mm -hmm. it was it was tough for everyone because we'd never been in this situation and then, and uh, the older players, you know, they were, it was really hard for them as well because we were all so young and mm. we ended up going down. So, you know, I try to be like, that experienced um, player, you know, in terms of, you know, I've played a lot of games and seen a lot of things happen in football that there's some things in the lower levels that mm. are the same as, you know, as football mimics, you know, everything. Yeah. It's, I don't know what the saying is, but like, you know, I, I was talking to a couple of the boys um, about, you know, uh, the, 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 the dark arts of football, you know, um, and being, and being, um, you know, uh, when you play against, for example, when I was at when I was at Orient, we we kind of we had a we had a really horrible side to us in terms of we won a lot of games one 0 and there was a lot of games where you know you we'd be hanging on and we I'd go down injured. Mm. It's just to waste a bit of time, and then you know the rules back then, all well, the rules now, are the keeper don't have to come off, yeah. the physios can come on. That's a minute of the time, mm. you know, and then. It really helped, you know, it really helped us, our team. And I think we need that, you know, um, younger, younger sort of teams. They need that sort of dark arts. Like, I think we you know, a lot of teams are very nice and it's very hard, are very easy to play against. I think you need the, the dark arts. I remember a story. Did you ever hear about, um, I think John Terry told a story about him and um, Peter Cech. Um, Jose Mourinho, I think it was like five minutes left of the game or something. And Jose Mourinho knew the rules that if two... I don't know if it's still the, the case now. No, it won't Peter Cech or someone else. If two players go down at the same time, they don't have to come off. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so that's how I know it. So <coughs> they don't have to come off. So literally, um, a player's gone down injured, obviously, just trying to kill time. But then he can see the bench saying, go down, go down, go down. John Terry's quickly gone down injured, um, holding his head or something. Killed so much time. And I think at that moment they were under pressure and then literally they got their treatment, kill time, they got to reset and then... Um, just, yeah, it's just, so just, important. Just, just carried on, yeah, carried that, that sort of stuff is so important. You know, I think the Premier League and, and the all the FA, everyone, they're trying to get rid of that, which is mm. which is good as well because I think, you know, a lot of the games, the ball in play is mm. nowhere near as much as it should be. You know, they're talking about, you know, they want clocks that stop when the ball's out of play, which I, I think is, is wrong, but... You know, um, that they're, they're doing their best to like, mm. you know, trying. And you know what? In the beginning of the season, they were adding 12 minutes of added time, mm. you know, and I think that's a bit ridiculous as well. Yeah, if you yeah. add up all the added time, it ends up, you end up playing another five games of football yeah. you know, over <laughs> the season. So it's no, true. It hasn't really been like that recently. No, no, no. I think they've tried to, you know, mm. it's a bit, a lot of people are complaining. There's a lot of football, you know, when you yeah. play 45, you add seven and mm. then you play 90 and you add 12. It's, yeah. You know, it's another 19 minutes of the game that mm. you're playing. So, um, you know, I think they'll, they'll bring that down. But I think, you know, the dark arts in terms of going down injured, mm. now there's 30 seconds when before yeah, you can come they, back on, got, which I think mm. is actually quite a good rule because you're players don't go wanna, down yeah, in the 90th minute off. anymore, which is good. Um, it's good for football. It's good for the fans because they get to see, you know, a lot of football. Um, but 
you know, on the other hand, you know, there's little things though that you can do like I, that I love to be fair, you mm. know, like, yeah, there's, there's stuff that I used to do at Orient, which was like, uh, <laughs> when we make a substitution, say if it's a goal kick, they're making a substitution. Some people, they put the ball down to take the goal kick, but mm. I'll hold it yeah. till the sub's made. Then, then I'll put the ball down and then do my routine to take the goal <laughs> kick. And that's like, it takes, it's like a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clock. So it's like, <laughs> it's just little things like that that I love doing. Like, yeah. <clears throat> those are those are sort of things that are, they're really important, I think. Um, and there's stuff that you learn just over experience, I think. Mm. I've seen someone else do it. They've probably seen, they've seen someone else. It just gets passed down. down yeah. And, and you know, that that's it's really important for football. Yeah, you've got to love the dark arts. You, you mentioned um, refereeing, actually. And um, this wasn't even on my thing to talk about. But with referees, now, my issue comes in. I know they have all of these um, rules or whatever to um, implement. But I look at it sometimes and I feel like there's no, there's not a common sense approach. And it's not, um, it's supposed to be the, high, the highest level of football. And I feel like there's no real consistency as well. So there was this whole debate about whether or not ex-players should become referees and everything. And... What's what's your view on not officiating because no one likes referees anyway, but what's your views on on how it's been going recently? Um, because there's been a couple of decisions where I'm just like, it's you know, it's horrible. Like players should have gone off, they're not going off, they give a yellow card for this, they don't give a yellow card for that. What's your view on it? And obviously now as well, you're working with VAR. You wasn't working with VAR yeah, before, yeah. yeah. So, what's your view on on everything um, in total? Yeah, no, I think they have a hard job. I think, um, you know, I have to, you know, no one wants to be a referee, like you said. Like, it's, mm. it's a tough, tough job. But I think, you know, they're full time in the Premier League, and I think they are in the Championship as well. So, um, you know, they 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 can look at mistakes, they can look at their decisions, they can mm. review it. The full time ones, I think, League One, League Two is very, very difficult because mm. they have a job. They go and ref on a Saturday and they go back to the job Monday and, yeah. you know, they can't really review it, which mm. is, you know, I think it's really, I think there should be over the, full time. Yeah. Full yeah. Time. Over the, over the EFL, I think they should all be full time from league two to the Premier League. Um, the VAR is actually interesting. I'm, you know what? I'm actually, I actually don't mind it, you know, to be fair, like mm. um, that we had a meeting with the, with a Premier League referee came in to, to speak to us. And he actually gave us the footage. I think they've they've started doing that now. That the you can hear what they're talking about when they're okay. doing a VAR. I know they decision. released the audio for for the, the Liverpool, Liverpool goal. One, yeah, but I think they've released a few others. I think now I've seen. I've seen Howard Webb got some some show where they go. They, they, they yeah, go through okay, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we we actually listened to one, and it was a uh, it was actually like quite insightful. Like mm. how much they they have such a short window as well. Like you don't mm. realize sometimes the decision takes two minutes, which can feel long, mm. but like within those two minutes, like what they're going through is actually, it's quite a lot and mm. under severe pressure, like because it's a goal that's been given or an offside or, you know, is so I, I actually admire them for, mm. you know, they go through such a, you know, and to be fair, like the Liverpool one is, is human error. Like it's a, it's a mistake, mm. mis, a, a misjudgment of communication or whatever it is, is, and you're, you're going to make one mistake in, you know, every, hundred or whatever. Mm. I think um what's important though is that I saw a, a percentage statistic. It was like since VAR they've got ninety eighty five or ninety percent of the decisions correct. Mm -hmm. Before that it was like seventy four percent. Which is like shows that it is, you know, it's it's not perfect. Nothing's ever gonna be perfect, mm. but it's it is um better. I don't think it's perfect, but I it just irks me when it's like every week now there's some sort of um human error. And my thing is that Obviously, the like offsides and if, if whether it's, oh, sure, like, whether or not the ball's over the line, that's a given that like, you can see that. But it's the ones where they've got a decision to make, and it's still a a human a human error. error. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. It just gets it just gets me like every week we're talking about something that has gone wrong with with refereeing. So I don't know. I I just thought it was interesting to hear how you view it from the other side, yeah, and, yeah. especially with VAR and everything. Um, but with VAR as well. Actually, it don't really affect you, actually, does it? Nah, yeah, no, yeah, really. yeah, because it's not like in training you you trained for. No, we don't train for VAR. <laughs> yeah. But what what we did what we did say is that you know when you think something's offside, you know you have to keep playing keep because mm. which is that's the most one, one annoying bit mm. is that they don't put their flag up straight away yeah. because they want to see if the action leads to a goal. Mm. Then they'll come back and give the offside, yeah. which is it can be quite annoying. But mm. is um that's just part of the 
part of the process that they have and you know we have to all, everyone has to get on with it i think cool. where are we oh yeah so cool so now i'm going to get into obviously you know you're at burnley but I, I i feel like the most interesting thing about you is your story and um to go from league one like you say to to burnley i think you're a good keeper i think you're a top top keeper actually and i watch football across the board so but still even for me at that level, it was a surprise to see you go from yeah, yeah. from there to there. And how did that come about for you? And how close to the move, or how soon did you know of any interest, or how quick was the the move and everything? Yeah, so I found out. I had well, to be fair, I had you know we not just me, but I think our team Orient. We had yeah. such a good season that you know I knew that you know there'll be interest in quite a few few of us because of how dominant we was mm. uh, in the league. Um, yeah, there was, you know, I think a team made an offer for me in, in January. Uh, I won't say who, but um, <laughs> they, they, it wasn't Burnley. They came in for me in January. Um, and from higher? From, yeah, for, it was a championship team. They okay. came in and uh, it was quite, you know, I, I, knew, I knew it came in and, you know, and it was just after we lost to Stevenage as well. So Stevenage was second in the league at the time mm. and it was a massive, it was built up as such a big, big game. And uh, we lost 3-0, I think. We just, they just bullied us on the day and just one of those days, happens, like, yeah, yeah, it just happens. And uh, I had a bit of interest, yeah, well, a team, not made an offer, but they came in, asked what it would take to, mm. to sell me. And I only found out literally after that game, which was, okay. you know, and, and then, you know, I think, you know, some of the staff, they must have thought I knew before the game, but I didn't, I actually had no idea. Oh, ah, did they think that? So they thought I knew before and then it affected, yeah, yeah but I, di I didn't actually know at all. Um, and to be fair, I, I, well, it was a oh, great opportunity. You know, mm. they needed the team in the chapter needed a keeper. I would have gone in as number one. It would have been an opp opportunity to play at you know a, a really really good level. And uh, Orient just said no, like it's not happening. Um, mm. We're we're six points clear in the league. Um, we want to get promoted. It's, you know, it's, and I understood that. You know, they they pulled me for. A, and to be, to be fair to Orient, they was very honest with me. They said mm. you know we, we can't we can't sell you. And but sorry, was your head gone though? No, 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 not at okay. all. Because because I knew that you know my contract was running out. Um, oh, okay. They they were trying to give me a new contract. I think once that and and I think they always thought that I would sign because it happened before two years prior. Mm. So I had another really good season, not in terms of the team, but personally, mm -hmm. I had a really good season. And uh, we came like tenth, I think, or eleventh. And you know, um, in the end, I ended up signing a new deal because of what was out there at that time. I didn't really want to move my family away from, yeah. from London and and go and start a new adventure wherever the teams were that wanted me at that time. But this time, you know, it was starting from January, a team knowing that I had six months left were willing mm. to, to buy me from, from Orient. And I think at that point there, it just started to, you know, oh, he could go now. Like yeah. he, he could he could go like in the mm. summer. And, you know, I, I was always transparent with Orient. I was always honest. I said to them, you know, I might have an opportunity to go and, you know, change my family's life, you know, put my kids in a really good school, you know. Um, and, you know, I, I never, I never, you know, I didn't try and be sneaky and, you know, mm. say I'm, I'm definitely going to sign here. And then yeah. I didn't, you know, I always was professional. I said to them, you know, I'm going to wait till the end of the season, see what's out there. You know, it's going to take a lot to move me from London because I love, you know, I love yeah, living yeah, here. Yeah. My family's all here. My mum and dad are here. Uh, my brothers and sisters, my friends, you know, it's, it's a lot for me to, to move from here and um you know they, they understood that like, they know you know what i'm tw i was 28 so i'm 29 now oh well, sorry i'm 29 now it was is a really it was a really difficult decision and even though i went from you know a team that just got promoted to league one to the premier league it was still a really really hard decision to make was it really though yeah no it was <laughs> it was because i knew that what i was going into i knew i wasn't going to play as much mm. um i knew you know i was going to have to move my family halfway up the country mm. um, i knew my kids would have to start a new school you know, I knew I wouldn't see my mum and dad that often. Mm. You know, things that, you know, um, people don't see on the outside. People yeah. just see, oh, he's just gone for money or he's just gone for this. I, I went because I, I knew I would get, you know, a year, two years here of training with, with top players, mm. you know, and then who knows what happens, you know. Where, where do you go from Burnley? You don't go, you know, back to League Two. Mm. You, you go to Championship or you go to league, a very good top League One club. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's not something that, you know, I... I, I I thought about it long for a long time and I knew it would be a tough decision. And yeah, like when I, when I, when it got to the summer, uh, we just got promoted. 
we all went away to Marbella for a celebration, mm. including the staff. It was brilliant. And then, um, yeah, got back and then it leaked that like I was signing for Burnley, which I hadn't even signed, hadn't even really spoke to Burnley at that time. Mm. I knew they were interested, but I hadn't really, you know, nothing was ever progressing. Mm. And uh, I had a few championship clubs, you know, I had a couple of League One clubs that were interested and it just felt like, you know, I've got an opportunity here to, you know, change mm. my life. You know, yeah. things can change. You know, I look at, you know, with Brighton, for example, Jason Steele, he went in as number two, number three. Mm. Um, and by the end of the season, he was playing. Yeah. And now he's, you know, he's rotating with a 20 million pound keeper that they bought from, from Anderlecht. So, mm. you know, sort of stuff like that. Football's such a, you know, it can change so quickly. You know, you can go from, you lose, you know, to, to Brentford like we did. Next week we play Bournemouth. We mm. beat Bournemouth three 0 four 0 You know that that's just how football is. It, it changes so quickly, and and you know that that's the mentality that I always you know I always have since I've come up here, and I think it's helped me. And and to be honest, I think most people would pick you know going to the Premier Premier League club, even if you know you know you're you're not going into the same situation. But I think if you're someone that believes in like yourself and can back yourself, then then you 100% do it. And like you said, it changes like lives. Because I think what people don't realise was that as much as you might be doing okay for yourself in League Two, in terms of family life and whatever, like without speaking about like money or whatever, it going to Burnley, I can imagine the difference on that. And how much of a difference ha has that been for you in terms of even that security for your family? Because it would be very different if he was a single man or whatever, but you've got a whole family and everything. So have you noticed or, not even noticed, but what peace of mind does that bring, just even having security? Um, yeah, no, it's not the peace of mind more. It's more that, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we can, you know, we all live together up there. Mm. Um, it's, it's really good for me. You know, I come home and, you know, my kids are there from school. They've had a really good day. They mm. go to a really good school. You know, they enjoy themselves. Um, you know, my wife, she's, She's come up. She has some friends up there that she knows, which is it all helped like in yeah. terms of, you know, in settling down. It's been a lot easier because when, when I moved from Tottenham to Liverpool, my my wife now, she was my, my girlfriend then. Mm. We were just having our first baby when I moved up to Liverpool. I was 20 mm. and um, we didn't know anyone up there. And, yeah. you know, and when you're 20 and with a, with a daughter, you know, there's not many 20 year olds that have, <laughs> that have kids. So like... <laughs> You know, you're you're limited to a whole different group of people. Early, you know what I mean? So, you know, like, it's, it's tough, which was, that's how it was then. Whereas now, you know, we're 29. Um, we've got friends there that have kids. They can come mm. over, bring the kids around. Um, we all have, you know, we'll cook dinner. And, you know, it's good. There's stuff like that, you know, like being adults and just having, you know, a really good family life. And, you know, that, that for me is so important. You know, something that last season at Orient, I had it, you know, I was doing the school run every morning, mm. going to training, picking the kids up from school, going home. Yeah. That was my day every day. You know, I didn't shy away from the fact that like, you know, I had to do my stuff at home, mm. not just because I'm training every day and then playing on a Saturday that I still wasn't a dad. I had to do my mm. duties. Otherwise I wouldn't have a happy wife at home. Like yeah. I would be happy at football, but it's so, it's so important. Yeah, and it's so, just exactly. <laughs> so um, I was doing every morning I'm waking up early. We weren't in till half nine. I was already up from seven, six yeah. thirty in the morning because I'm having to get the kids ready for school, and then you know, so it's, it, it was good. That and I think that helped me, you know, um, at Orient. You know, I had that settled family life, and mm. then you know, I'm going in, and I just feel I felt great every Saturday that mm. you know, yeah, I've done my work this week, and now I'm ready to play and get three points and go home and enjoy. It's it's it's, it's good hearing how you um, speak about Orient because. Obviously, if, if it weren't for your time at Orient, you, you wouldn't. Yeah, well, yeah. not say you wouldn't, but you probably wouldn't be be where you are to, today. And what was it about Orient where that made you feel at at home? And at what point did you feel like, yeah, I'm coming into my own? Was there a point where the penny dropped for you? you yeah, know? yeah, oh, 100%. Um, we had, you know, we had such a, you know, we, the first year I signed, uh, it was it was it was hard because. Uh, Justin Edinburgh, the old manager, had passed away. Like had a heart yeah, attack. Yeah, and um, you know uh, it was it was hard. I could see it in everyone's faces. And obviously, I had I didn't know him, and I was coming in in January, mm. so like I could see it in everyone's faces in training. It just felt like a drag for everybody. You know, mm. it was it was tough. You know, when you lose someone that was your leader, 
um, so soon. Um, I could just see it. And then, you know, you kind of have the hangover from that again the next mm. season. And it's just like everyone is just so down. And um, it was just really, really tough. You know, um, we had we had some really good leaders in the squad, like um, that were, you know, that did everything they could. But it was just such a hard place to be because of how important he was to them. You know, yeah. he got them out of the National League, which is a really, really tough league to get out Trust of. Me. And um, to then lose him weeks before the season started was, was you know, it was, it was heartbreaking. And then after that, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the players, they had their contracts. So when they got promoted, a lot of players, they signed two-year deals. Mm. So after those two years were done, you know, they had a the big decision to make whether you give them, some got new deals, some didn't. But it allowed the new manager, who was Kenny Jacket, to come in and literally bring in whoever he wanted, mm. which was, you know, for him, you know, it kind of, it, it, was a, it was a really, real big turning point for the club because, you know, um, he, he brought in players that, you know, players that were playing in League One, you know, that were big, big players yeah. for the for the level. Um, you know, they came they came to League Two and, and we were seen as sort of, not the biggest fish, but one of the big fishes of the league. So, you know, we had a manager that had managed in the championship, managed one of the best League One teams ever when he was at Wolves. So we had a really, really, you know, we had a really good squad. We had a, you know, somewhat good start. I think um, we did okay. And then it just, after Christmas, it just, I don't know what happened. I don't know. It was just really, really hard to, mm. you know, we just couldn't win a game. I don't think we won for 15, 16. And I remember, I think we lost to someone. I, I spoke to one of my mates that played for the other team on the pitch. And he just said like, what's going on? Like, <laughs> and I went, you know, they were, they were and the thing is like, we beat Swindon. It was another one of my old clubs. Beat them 4-1 on uh, December, mm. in December, early December. And then we didn't win until March, which was like, and and considering that we were we went seventh when we beat Swindon in mm -hmm. December, when when Kenny Jacket lost his job, I think that was uh, mid February or end of end of February, um, we were like twentieth. Yeah. So we had dropped 13, 14 places in the league um, within two months because mm. we couldn't win a game of football. Uh, it was really really tough. And then uh, Richie Wellens came in, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, he was. You know, he was... What was the main thing that he... He just wanted us to enjoy ourselves for the rest of that season. We needed just we needed to be safe, you know. Mm. And I think his first game, first two games we drew. So we drew with Hartlepool, I think, away. And then Forest Green, who were clear at the top. Mm. We drew with them away as well. But we just showed like that, you know, we had a bit of fight in us left, you know, because it was so hard that, you know, you go down, you lose so many games and then you're, in, you're worrying that you could get relegated from a league that you were seventh two months earlier, yeah. you know, it's, it's something that doesn't happen often. So uh, for us, we knew that, you know, when he came in, uh, he, he just said, no, I want us to enjoy, you know, we're going to do debrief after every game. We have to work hard on a Friday. We do our tactical shape. Mm -hmm. And then on a Saturday we'll win games. And to be fair, we started winning a few games and then, you know, we stayed up and then that allowed him in the summer to go and build again, build, put some, bring in some more players and then, yeah, the start of that season was, I think in the first 10 games, we won nine and drew one, mm. which was incredible. I think we had about seven clean sheets in the first 10 games, which was yeah. like incredible. But I think it's because, you know, in pre-season, uh, we lost a few strikers with injury. So we worked defensively all day defensively, <laughs> like literally it was all we could do. Yeah. So it was just working on shifting, shifting across, shifting across. And we become, so it was muscle memory. Mm. And then, yeah, I think to keep 24 clean sheets, I think that is crazy. In, it's incredible. That I think it's more, it's more than level. half the league games. Yeah, like, so level, uh, it was mad. Like mm. I think, um, but I think I said to him, you know, like I think maybe we should injure the the, the strikers every preseason yeah, yeah, yeah. because <laughs> to get twenty four clean sheets off the back of that, I think is incredible. But like, yeah, we won about fifteen or sixteen games one nil, mm. and that that says it all in terms of how important it was mm. that we done we done that defensive shape as long as you guys do your job at the back you've always always got a chance yeah, because always got a chance we we had really really good attackers mm. anyway you know we added some really really good attackers there's two I'm going to talk about well, yeah. one attacker but there, we, there's, there's two players I'm going to ask you about now one my guy Omar yeah yeah brilliant yeah, yeah. yeah. what's he what's he like around yeah, he's just a leader just mm. a, like a leader um knows uh, knows the level done really really well for us in turn I think actually it was actually too good for League, for league 2 when, when mm. I was playing with him um, 
really, really good, composed on the ball, you know. Uh, he actually helped me out because, you know, sometimes I'd be in a sticky situation getting the mm. ball back and he's there, I can just give it to him and he'll, yeah. you know, and he'll make, he'll dribble past someone and then, you know, ping the ball over to the left wing. And I think he'd done that brilliantly for us um, last season. Um, he's a, he's a really good guy off the pitch as well. I think that helps. Don't, he, great guy, great guy. Um, he's the one that actually sorted him out with the PFA actually. Um, don't you think, yeah, that he's got that thing about him where, He's like a grown man. Obviously, he's a grown man. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's just no, like because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a man, but I'm a yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a little kid, like so. I'm banter. I chat to everyone. Mm. I banter. He is a man. Yeah. Like, he is. He ain't. He ain't messing around, and he knows. And, and to be fair, he'll join in the banter a little yeah, bit. But you know, like mm. he he wants to win game. He don't care about this laughing on Wednesday. Yeah, win Tuesday, Wednesday. He don't care. He wants to win on Saturday. Whereas me, like I'm. I'm still cracking a bit of banter like mm. 10 minutes before I'm warming up yeah, yeah, yeah. before the game. Like, but then once I'm in the warm up, I'm like, right, let Switch me just up. concentrate. Mm. Let me, but Omar's, he's ready for Saturday on Wednesday. <laughs> like he's ready to, to win games of football. So no, nah, he's, he's a, he's a leader. He's a man. Like, he's, mm. he's, he's a really, really good guy. Yeah, he comes across that way. Like cool guy. And the other one who I don't really have um, an intimate relationship with, but I just saw that he was playing really well last year. Paul Smith. Yeah, Paul Smith, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I tried to get player. him on the podcast, actually. He actually responded and said he's going to get back to me. But I think you lot were in the, like, the thick of it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, where it, I think it was that moment where you guys were just so yeah, yeah, yeah. focused and whatever. But, um, yeah, I'm going to revisit that. He's at QPR now, right? Yeah, he's gone back to QPR, yeah. Yeah. Um, but how good was he, man? Yeah, yeah, no, he was brilliant. Um, you know, you have them players that, you know... This is when you were saying, when you have a defence that, you know, they're going to keep it nil-nil. Mm. Then you have that one moment of, and then he scores. Yeah. that That's what he was. Like, he was, you know, there were games last season where, you know, it would be nil-nil or 1-1. Mm. And, and, you know, it's, it's a, in, and in most other games, it finishes 1-1 or nil-nil, like those games. Mm. When you've got Paul Smith, those kind of players, you know, he'll make something out of nothing. He'll beat three, four players. Yeah. And then put it in the bottom corner. And I think... That's what I think set set him apart from. I think I think he was the best player in the league last year. Yeah, he really, um, really in good. the whole of League Two, mm. um, and you know uh, I think it showed that by the fact he got a championship move from it off the back of it. Mm. You know um, he he was he was class like he was a really really good guy. He's more like me in terms of the back. Yeah, will be joking all the way up to kickoff. But mm. you know um, he 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 was always you know he knew what he needed to do and. I think it helped as well. The manager gave him a license, you know, that, you know, uh, he really struggled with injuries the season before. Mm. The manager, you know, there were some games where we're winning 2-3-0 mm. and uh, he'd take him off just to save his legs so he doesn't get injured, so he doesn't, you know. And that that was really important, you know. I think knowing that we had a, a manager that, yes, we wanted to win every game, but also he had the best interests of everyone else at heart mm. in terms of like, we're going to need Paul Smith next week. Yeah. If we're winning 2-0 here. Let's see the game out 2 0. We don't need to score again. Let's mm. see it 2 0. Get Paul Smith off and then wrap him in cotton wool for the game next week, which was important because we helps, had him. And it helps when you've got a defence who's. Who doesn't concede. Yeah. Which was, that, was, that was the, that was the, um, the base of our, of our success, I think. The foundation mm. of the success was having a really good defence. But then on top of that, we had you know, match winners like Paul Smith, George Moncur, Ruel Satiriu, Aaron Drynan. You know, all those sort of players that they can make something out of nothing, you know. And You know, your team was actually, like, ridiculous. Like, the level, it, yeah, was. It's actually ridiculous for level, but also, it's it come out of nowhere, for me anyway. Like, because when I look at Leighton Orient, I always looked at you like, as, like, not promotion, basically. Yeah. And no, that's not even a, a disrespectful thing. So, when I saw halfway through the season that you guys are actually, like, Doing all right. I'm just like, oh, okay. Because London club, and you always want the London clubs to do well, apart from your war. Can't stand them. <laughs> Can't stand them. But um, yeah, no, no. It just come as um, a bit of a surprise. And it was actually a really, really good team. And um, I'd, I've not really been seeing the squad as much. But has the squad changed as much over there? I think they've made a few, they've, they've made a few signings. We I think to, um, they had to, yeah. Um, it's, it's a tough league, League One. So I think, you know, we're always going to find it tough. Mm. going up a level and I think it's the same with Burnley like yeah. going up a level it's, it's tough like um, but I think they've made some really good signings I think that once it you know it will come together and then you know you never know what can happen you know mm. I think they're 10th in the league or 11th now so I think that's really really good I'm, I'm really happy for them you know I always check look for their results I want them to do well because you know there was such an important 
part of my career that like you know I, I, I want all of my former clubs to do well and that's you know not being not being a I don't want to be one of those guys that you know I didn't like playing for this club or no nah, I, I love playing for all the clubs I and to be fair I gave it my all uh for every club I played for so I don't have no you know um ill wishes towards any of them mm. so you know I, I look at the Orient fixtures I look at the Swindon games you know I want them to do well so do you still I, look at Liverpool and Tottenham well, I mean, it's the same. You can, they're, they're the games that are most easiest to look at yeah. because they're the ones that you, oh, yeah, for real. you go on your phone and you know the score anyway. So, um, yeah, Liverpool and Spurs as well. Like, I think Spurs is such an important club for me. Um, you know, they took me from, you know, a kid that wasn't, you know, I didn't really have anything going for him to then, you know, got me, you know, a, a, literally gave me a career. So I think mm. that's so important for me, you know. I have to respect what they what they did for me, and you know when we played them the other day, I think a lot of like when we played them the other day, the staff, a lot of them I knew them, so mm. it was good to catch up with them and good to speak to them because you know they're really really good guys, and I, I really wish the best for them. Yeah, I mean that's for Arsenal, so we're just gonna, <laughs> we're just gonna leave that there. But in terms of fitness, right? I always look at keepers, and whenever I'm playing, keepers always do their own their own thing. They don't really get involved in the in that like the the box of boxes and. 12 minute runs or whatever but has that changed now no or? no we don't get involved in the running <laughs> but, but, but to be fair here we get a lot involved in the possession which mm. is amazing like i love it so we'll be in near enough every possession that they do um and i think for me that's really really good because like i say i want to be the best at mm. with my feet i want to be i want to be very very good with you know with playing out and i think i, I thought i was really really good at it last season mm. when i was the only one doing it now i have to be even better which yeah. is which is so important. And the fact that we do so many possessions during the week, so good. But yeah, don't you think, it? well, not don't you think, I always look at keepers and I always think, they secretly think they're outfield players, you know? So do you get involved and actually think that, no, no, I'm I'm, I'm one of the best here? <laughs> no, no, I don't think I'm the best, but I'll, I'll be honest, I think, um, you know, the keepers that we've got here at Burnley, I think all of us are really, really comfortable with the ball at our feet. So, you know, uh, one thing, you know, we used to get called session wreckers before. Like yes. Keepers now, we ain't session. Oh, not not at Burnley, for sure. We're not session wreckers. It's just mm. important that we, you know, we just pass. We're really comfortable and composed with the ball. And that's what they want really as well. So mm. as long as you can show that in training, then you've always got a chance. When you look at, you know, your keeper, who's number one right now, um, Trafford. Yeah. What makes him so good for a young keeper as well? Because he's really I mean, I, mean I think, yeah, he's 20, I think, yeah. or 21. Yeah, no, he's... He's really, really good. The one thing that I think is is so important for him is that he's a, he's a very, very confident boy. Like mm. he knows, like he knows what he's good at. He's confident. He believes in himself, and you know, I think it's it's good to have that because it's just that sort of is is that sort of confidence. You can't you can't um, you can't teach it. Yeah. It's what you have, you either mm. have that or you don't. And he's got it. And to be fair to him, you know, he's he works hard in. He's a, he's a great lad, works hard every day. Um, he knows what the manager wants for, off him. And to be fair to him, I think he'll be a very, very good keeper in the future. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm really happy, you know, that I get to work with him every day and see, you know, what he, what he's, what he's good at. He had a really, really good summer with the 21s. They won, mm. I think they won the, they won the tournament and he didn't concede a goal. Yeah. Saved the penalty in the mm. final. So I think uh, his stock was really, really high and, you know, I think it's it's good. You know, I think he's a very very good keeper that will that will have a very very good career. And um, Vincent Company, I was there's no way I was not going to talk about Vincent Company, right? Um, not even so much his management right now. In, in fact, we can touch on his management. But for you growing up, obviously you saw you watch Premier League. You see, we know who Vincent Company is. What's he actually like as a man and as a manager in terms of? just being around him and did, were you ever like this is Prince and Company when you got there uh, well when I first signed I shook his hand and he was like oh, I mean, I'm so happy to have you here mm. finally because it took quite a bit of time to sign the, to get the contract sorted and stuff mm. um, contract, which was actually moment. quite humbling for me to be fair mm. like and then yeah like he's you can tell that like, he's got like that that aura about him mm. that's like yeah I've won I've won the Premier League I've been here um, but also he's got that you know uh he he won't take he won't take no rubbish, man. Yeah. That's like that's like that's important, man. That's that's important to have. Um, he's very fair, like in terms of you know, um, he'll give people chances to you know to to understand what he wants. Mm. We the, like I was saying earlier, the detail in his work. I don't think he. I really don't think that he um, 
watches anything other than football, which yeah. is mad. I think is is crazy. Like, yeah. But he's immersed himself in it. And I think that's what you need as a manager. You know, I mean, like as a player looking at your manager, because mm. he watches everything so, and he looks at such fine details that, you know, um, you know, the, the littlest thing that I would go, oh, it's not even that bad. Mm. He'll be like, no, no, we need to do better here. Yeah. And it's, it's just a, a tiny thing. The detail in a position, for example, mm. you could be maybe two centimetres out of position and he'll go, no, you need to be, and he'll show it on the meeting and it's, and it's that level of detail. I don't, I don't think you can teach that. I think you either have, like I say, you either mm. have that or you don't have it. And I've had many managers in my career where they, you know, it's not that important whether you're a centimetre out of position as long as you, get the ball and do what you need. Nah, he thinks that football should be played a certain way. And he's a, he's a, he'll be a, he will be one of the best managers in the world. And I think it, for me to have my name associated with him, mm. it's, it's, it's very important for me because he's, he'll, he'll go a very, very long way in this game. But you can see that even with the way you guys play, because when championship teams normally come up, there's a certain way that they play that I'm used to seeing. Luton have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sheffield United ha have it. Burnley don't, look that way which is so weird considering where they've come from so I remember halfway through the season last year I was looking at Burnley and in my head when I think of Burnley I think of Sean Dash, Dash yeah, yeah. direct football like no games just but then I saw you man playing like obviously not you but you weren't there. Yeah. but then I, I saw the way they were playing and even carrying it into this season and and I'm just looking I'm thinking oh Vincent Comedy's done He's done wonders here, man. Because it's not easy to change a whole oh, style no. from, for, for a team. Do you know, especially one indoctrinated yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in thingy. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just I just find that interesting, actually. And um, one thing I also did want to touch on before we um, <laughs> before we come off, that stigma of black keepers. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those, man. To be fair, when I was playing last season, uh, Orient... <laughs> There's quite a few of us, you know, in, in League Two. Uh, um, yeah, you get that stigma though everywhere, don't you? <laughs> it's just like, it's one of those, man. I think it's changing. I think Anana's going to be, he, he has to be the one that, we had Mendy, he done really well. Yeah, and, yeah. Done really well. And then he's now gone to um, Saudi Arabia. Um, Anana, you know, the thing is though with Anana, I, I really like Anana. I, I like him too. I think he's good. I like, like him too. I think, yeah, okay. He's made some, some errors. He's made mm. some mistakes. But I think if you ask any Inter Milan fan in the beginning, mm -hmm. he wasn't great in the first 20 games, 15 games. Then after that, ex excellent. Mm. Ajax, the same thing. Didn't start the greatest. Mm -hmm. Then was brilliant. So I think, I think that's what you know. Mm. You know that's what you're going to get with him. I think Man United is such a big club. You want success from the first time they put on the shirt. Mm -hmm. Just don't think football's like that. I think you have to give these people time yeah. you know, to, to get used to it. It's a new league. It's a new language. It's a new... You know, maybe he speaks English, I don't know, but it's a new league. He has to speak English. Um, the weather in Manchester, trust me, I live there, it's horrendous. <laughs> you know, coming from Milan to Manchester, mm -hmm. I think is is a bit of a difference in terms of the weather. But I even said on my podcast last week that Onana, even when they signed him, I said, he's going to concede like mad goals. I think he's a really, really good keeper, but don't be fooled, he's going to concede the mad goals, especially in the beginning. But I've seen enough to know that he will, he will come good. Yeah, he will yeah. Come good. Do you get I think what I'm he, he's so confident with the ball at his feet. Mm. I think, um, and again, I think for Man United fans, they're probably not used to seeing a goalkeeper stand on the ball and wait for someone to come and press before mm. they pass it. Yeah, which is like which is it's not what they're used to. But that's football. Like that's mm. football now. We're all told to do it. Like majority of teams, I think, are told to you know wait for the press. Don't just pass for no reason because mm. then you can set up the trigger for the press, which yeah. is you know as. It's tactical stuff, but it's the way football's going, which is why a lot of games, they're a lot slower when it's in terms of the building phase mm. because they're waiting for someone to come to them play yeah. around them. Whereas like, you know, in League Two, they just, you know, they, they just pass it because they're open. Yeah. It's not like that in the in the Premier League. So um, I think it's, it's important to to just give Anana, Anana time because I think he'll be good, man. He'll, be, he'll, be, he'll come good. I think he's... You know, he done really well at Ajax, done really well at Inter Milan, mm. you know, and I'm just waiting for him to to come good at, yeah. come good at Man United. I think uh, there's also Fodderingham at Sheffield United. Um, keeper. He's having a, the thing is, you know what? Really, really good keeper, yeah. To be honest, I'm someone that says anyone that plays that at a certain level, 
I can't call him rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm not. You know, some people. Oh, he's rubbish. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he's rubbish at all. I think he's a really, really good keeper. Really good keeper. I think he's having a tough time right now. Yeah, it's like, but I mean, but it's, it's they're the, playing tough games. Yeah, things. man, it's it's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy, and um, everything is under scrutiny, especially is it in I, the Premier League. Do you know what what the worst thing is? Yeah, as a Sheffield United keeper right now. So let's say the game against Newcastle where they're eight, eight, eight. Yeah. He people look at him and think, how can you concede eight? But it's not that you're playing a. A top cl- um, top club, but because you're the side, keeper, they just beat PSG. Yeah, or they were just about to beat PSG. Yeah. Like it's it's tough. Like, and the thing with the Premier League, and this is what I find really really difficult as well, is that in the Championship, in League One, League Two, mm. you can make a mistake Saturday. Most weeks, you have a game Tuesday, mm. so that you do well on the <laughs> yeah. Tuesday. You've got you're week, right. A week to sit on it. Here, you've got a week mm. to sit on your performance from. Mm. So, because it's only thirty eight games, yeah. not forty six. So, I find it. That for me is the big, the biggest. That's the toughest thing mm. for me. Like, so you can concede eight. Let's say you concede eight before the international break. Oof. It's two weeks of yeah, conceding yeah. eight goals. Like, that's on your mind. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, if you play League One, League Two, you could concede eight Saturday. But you know, on Tuesday, yeah. if you get another chance to play, you could keep a clean sheet, and mm. no one cares about the eight nil. Like, yeah. and that is where like the mentality of you just have to put things away. As soon mm. as it's done, gone. You know, yeah. like yesterday we lost to Brentford three 0 I left the changing room. I was disappointed that we didn't win the game. As soon as I left the changing room, gone. I need to think about, all right, Monday, what we need to be, mm. need to be better so that on Saturday when we play Bournemouth, we have the best opportunity to win that game. Yeah. We can't take what's happened against Brentford into the game against Bournemouth. Otherwise, it lingers. Mm. And when it lingers, I think that's what happened when we had that run when I was talking about when we had Kenny Jacket at Orient. Oh, we didn't okay. win yeah, for 16 yeah, yeah. games. Just, it just, you know, you play Saturday, you lose. You play Tuesday, you lose. You play Saturday again, you draw, but you should have lost. Mm. You play Tuesday again, you draw. And then you're coming up to Christmas, busy period, and it's just lingering. Yeah. Oh my God, when are we going to win? And all you're thinking about is when are we are going to win? Not how are we going to win this game? You're thinking, mm. when are we going to win a game? Like, is it not this one? Is it not the next one? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's when you keep it lingering, that's when it becomes a big, big problem. Yeah. And, you know, um, I think, you know, like I say again, going back to the black keepers, I think we've had some really, really good ones, you know, recently. Um, and now we're just, you know, we're just hoping that, you know, someone comes in as well. <laughs> I think, oh, no, no, it could be the one. I think, he, I think he'll be very, very good for mm. for um, Manchester United. Yeah, no, he's, he's like I say, he's a, he's a good keeper, and um, I'm not going to sit here and say he's rubbish. But I, I did know. I mean, I did, I did think he was going to struggle, to be honest, in the beginning at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, before we go, um, growing up, if you felt, what made you become a keeper? We just. I nah, just, just I missed the trials for the school team <laughs> year seven, so they needed a keeper. I used to play keeper in my my state I grew up in, mm. and some, well, I didn't play there. I just went in yeah, goals sometimes, yeah. like you know, we change goalies after a minute or whatever. Mm. And yeah, I could play there, and so uh, they needed a keeper, so I just went in goal, like, and, and then that just, was it. Wow, cool. Um, growing up, which goalkeepers did you like look look to or? I didn't really look at keepers, man, back in the day. Really? Yeah. Didn't really like, like, because I never wanted to play in goal. So mm. the one keeper, the one keeper that I've, the one keeper that I've looked at and gone, wow, like, this is what I want to be like is Edison. Okay. In terms of the way he plays. That's more like, like now. Though. Now though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I was younger, I didn't really have mm. like any of Yeah. What's your take on the whole De Gea thing? Like how they got rid of him? Not even how they got rid of him, but. A lot of people were looking at the hair saying he was finished and everything. And I was just like, do you know how he's mad not, that is? He's not finished. Do you know how mad it is? He's what, 31? He's not finished. Mate, Nowhere near it. I think it. he might be a bit older than that. Though. But, but still, actually, no, he might actually be about I'd be 32, 30, 33, yeah. 31, one but of those. Like, he's not, that's the prime. I think he's, I think it's so crazy that overnight people are looking at him like. Yeah, because people in football have short memories. Mm. One player of the year, been like, what, five or six years in a row at United. Yep. You know, um, People just want, the, the thing with De Gea is the manager came in, he wanted to play a certain style of play, mm. similar to when Pep came in with Joe Hart. Yeah. You know, he wants to play a certain style of play with the keeper. Mm. Not that De Gea can't do it, probably can, but he wanted someone that- Does it at the level that- At the level mm. that he wants, mm. right. And so he went and got Onana. That's, that's football. Mm. That, some, you're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Like, mm. you know, um, uh, happened with Joe Hart. Joe Hart was England number one, was- the best keeper in the, in the Premier League for a couple mm. of years, wasn't he? Pep comes in. Nah. Joe Hart could do it, probably. Couldn't, mm. couldn't play like that. But he didn't, 
want Joe Hart. He wanted someone that can it got Bravo. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah. He didn't make, it was, I thought Bravo was really good, you know, but. But then Edison took it to. But then Edison went yeah. to another level, which is, that's mm. football, you know, mm. and um, that's what happens. I think, uh, I think he's harsh on De Gea, but also I understand why mm. they haven't gone with De Gea because yeah. I think, you know, football is, you have to, the manager wants what the manager wants. And, that's it. And if you want the manager to be successful as a club, you have to back him. Mm. And they've backed him with Vonana. So and if you it. If you had to talk about, if you had to mention top five keepers right now, obviously Edison, Allison. Edison, Allison. Mm. Oh, to Stegen. Oh, yeah. Keeper. Um, trying to think of any more in the Prem. Yeah, that I like. Uh, um, let me think. Pope. Nah. <laughs> I like Pope. It's good. It's very good, but I think... Um, English text. I like... I like um, you know, you know. Uh, let me think. Let me think. I like Martinez at Villa. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Martinez. Yeah. Martinez, good, good keeper. And I tell you who I love: uh, the keeper at Milan, Mainan. Mainan, yeah, 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 yeah. Good. I was going to mention him with five. the black keepers, but um, yeah, okay, he's good. cool. No, he's, he's he's very good. Should I tell you who I like? And it's people always wonder why do I like him? And I just really like Sam Johnson. Yeah, Sam yeah, Johnson. yeah, yeah. I, I really, yeah, you, yeah. You know, you know, for me, yeah, my, my thing is. You ain't got to be the most extravagant player, whether that be outfit player or goalkeeper, whatever. But if you're really good at doing your job, you know, I I, I respect it. And I, I just think Sam Johnson's just a... Yeah, yeah. He's just a steady he, keeper. Yeah, yeah. I think he's more than just steady. I think yeah, he's good. Yeah, no, he's, he's, a, he's yeah, a really, yeah, yeah. really good I think keeper. he's very good. I think he's underrated. 100%. In this country. Yeah, I 100%. think he's... For what he's done at Crystal Palace, mm -hmm. for what he's done in... Uh, where he at West Brom? Yeah. West Brom. What he would have done at West Brom... Uh, he's been very, very good. I think, I think he's, he's been. I think he's a really, really good keeper. He's been one of one of the best, mm. you know, consistently. Yeah, you know, over a long period of time. Mm. I think fair play to him. I think he's done well. That's like when when I look for when I look at players, I look at players who consistently give me a seven. I think too many times people look at ten out of ten all the time, and you're not gonna. Yeah, but get that. when you're a ten out of ten, you're either a two, yeah, or a ten. Exactly. You need a seven, eight. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and when I get the sevens, like. Another one, like when I look at even people were making fun that Man United had Johnny Evans in the team. But I like Johnny Evans. Johnny Evans is one of the smartest players I've seen play live. Yeah, do, do you get what like, I'm saying? Yeah, he just knows where to be um, really, really good on the ball. Mm. He's a good player. Johnny There's Evans a reason very, very that he's playing player. for Man United. There's reason. This is it. So when but, people were talking about, oh, Johnny Evans is back in the I'm like, are you if, not he, if right? he wasn't, If he wasn't good, they wouldn't play him. Mate. It's as like, simple as that. If like, Johnny Evans was 22, he'd be a 50 million pound defender. Yeah, I yeah, agree. If he was young, like he's he's a really really good player. I, I like him. I like him. But I don't know. That's just how I look at football. People are gonna call me mad for saying that, but I just look at football a bit differently. But yeah, no, Lawrence. Listen, love for coming on. No, I appreciate. Um, it. To be honest, there's certain people that say they're gonna come on, and it takes ages to yeah, do. Yeah. But I knew you were kind of gonna. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah I had to. It was good. Yeah, yeah, Enjoyed no, it. No, I love that man. But um, yeah, man. What's what's next for for you? Just gonna keep. Yeah, yeah, away keep, at yeah, keep plugging away, see what happens, and then you know, um, just enjoy, enjoy the ride, and hopefully we can stay up, mm. and then you know, give it a good, 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 um, good chance next season, and see what happens. But yeah. you know, just try and learn from mm. from the managers and my goalkeeper coach and everyone, yeah. and see what happens. It's and it's funny how things can change in football, like you said. You know, yeah. not wishing injury on anyone or whatever, but you could get a game or two and then literally just make Never it know. Yeah. yeah yeah that's just football you know I've, i look at like i say i look at steel mm. he's done the same thing you know, uh sanchez done the same thing mm. at um, brighton so you know uh these things happen you know yeah. you never know in football so just see what yeah. happens just if you become that number one just don't change the number really. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna switch up with everyone but yeah guys um keep liking subscribing sharing hope you've enjoyed that get your comments in um i'm gonna put all the Instagram handles or whatever in the chat. I mean, in the description. But yeah, guys, we are out. Cheers.